Oh, welcome to the Audacity Podcast. I am the man on the street. Man, I got a, a special treat for you. I mean, my first live, my first live interview with a music producer, a songwriter, composer. I mean, just an all around, I mean, great musician. I'm talking about no other than Mr. Darren Light. Oh, what's going on, my brother? I'm good. And yourself, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, my brother, man. Right, Hopefully, good. people out there can hear you as well, man. But hey, man, I, first of all, I want to take this time to thank you for giving me the chance to interview you today and just to sit down and let's just have a conversation. No doubt. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, I. I heard all your music, you know, and then, you know, I didn't know that you did so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's crazy because, because you know, you know, you, you, you work with a bunch of people that we know, but you're the, like the man behind the stream. You, you, you're the man that makes the, the music happen. True. Yeah. Because, because I know that you, you, you're a true musician. That's one thing I always knew about you. And what else did you know? We from the same hometown, bro. You can keep it real with me. You ain't got to give the I don't know you. You can say, hey, man, yeah, I heard. I, I know we from the same, from the same hometown, man, but you know, yeah, I want people to know how great you are because some of the songs that they're still dancing to, some of the songs that they're dancing to now, because I know you got new music coming. We're going to talk about it a little later. But I, right. know, I know you just you you just a man of many talents. Um, well, I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate to have been able to uh, find my way in some prominent situations with some great people. And um, uh, really, to God be the glory, man. Because if you had have told me when I was singing with the young voice of Vesto and playing behind Miss Dawkins and practicing out there in the trees and firming with me and Will Seth, I mean, Will Solomon, bro, yeah. Cedric Solomon, yeah. that, you know, it would turn into all this stuff, man. I didn't have a clue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know, man. And you know, let, let's delve, let, let's let's draw up into you know. I want to start from the beginning because I know people know who where you at now. But let's start from the beginning because you was born in Patterson, New Jersey. Correct. But man, what three, four? We moved from Jersey, and um, because my mother is from Furman. And uh, they relocated back to Esto, and we lived in Fairwood Apartments. My mother, uh, my father, um, one of them was a manager when we moved back from New Jersey. So that's where um, life started out between uh, Fairwood Apartments. And then we moved to Savannah for a couple of years. And then my parents built the home there in Furman. And then uh, unfortunately, they didn't make it. And father moved to Jacksonville. And so me and Cliff and Calvin, uh, we uh, bounced back and forth between oh, Stacey, South Carolina and Stacey. Jacksonville. Yeah, Stacy. Well, yeah, well, we see Stacy. <laughs> Stacy didn't make the move. It was only me, Cliff, and Calvin going back and forth okay, between okay, okay. Stacey, Jacksonville and Nesto. Yeah, she never went to school in Jacksonville. She okay. never stayed a year with my father. Okay. But uh, yeah, we stayed. I think we never spent more than two years after that. From middle school on through high school, we never spent more than two years at one school. Yeah, and I understand that, man. Do, do you have any fondest memory of growing up, you know, even though you was in Patterson, New Jersey? Do you have any memories from growing up being there in Patterson, New Jersey? Nah, at the time that we moved out, I was I was too young to, to recall anything uh, other than um, probably all the snow. You know, my father used to lose kids. You know, I can remember young enough that he would take us and think we put on trash bags or whatever and slid down the mountain. You know, that was about it. Yeah, you didn't get that in South Carolina. Nah, nah. You didn't get that in South nah. Carolina. So, you know, but but growing up, you know, going from a place like Patterson, New Jersey, a population of 150,000, I know you said you was young, but then coming down to a small place like Uster, South Carolina, you know, growing up, what, what kind of experience did you experience, you know, I guess growing up, like, like they say, in the country? Quality of life, man. Good people. Um, you didn't have access to a lot, but you had access to good relationships, you know, good friends. So if you had good friends like uh, Willie Orr and Vince Jenkins and Tyrone Lewis, and Tyrone Balsic and uh, Pastor Lumpy, uh, Reverend Lewis as he is now, man, we used to play basketball, the Saxons, we used to 
down at Kent Saxon and yeah. that man listen we made the most of it and to me that's what I learned it wasn't necessarily about how much there was to do but it was about the quality of life and, you know if you were with people who enjoyed being around you figured it out you know yeah and that's what I tell a lot of people too even though we come from a, a, a I'm just talking to um I was just talking to Bird, Bird, Pee Wee, um, Jeff, um, all these guys told me to tell you what's up, man. You know, just like what? guys, and we just reminiscing about growing up in a small town, and and you want to trade that for the world, even though you, you done went on to bigger and better things, you know. But it always goes back to like you just say, going outside, playing, because we were saying that these kids today, you know, they got the PS5, Xbox, or whatever. But we, we had a target. You know, yeah, we had the little Atari with the, the little blip ball and the two things going up, you know. And I mean, it, it it sounded exciting until you figured out, like, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go outside, man. Let's yeah, right let's, let's go outside. Let's go outside. Yeah. So, did the love of music uh, um, come to you at an early age when you was growing up in the South? No, that was my father, Cliff and Lighty. Uh, my father was a church musician. I mean, he played for every church in Hampton County, Allendale, uh, Jasper County, of all few. But he was a church musician, but he made, he showed me how to play. And he taught Cliff how to sing. We taught all of us how to sing and play, but primarily taught me most of, of uh, playing. And uh, he was like Joe Jackson. I mean, I wanted to be outside playing basketball. And he'd be like, nah, man. Get in here and sit down and let me show you something. Man, you know, I could form all the tears in the world, but it won't go change until I play what he told me to play. Yeah, and, and, uh, I understand that because like I said before, when I when I did the um I, I guess you call it a commercial, but I want people to know that you are all around musician. What what all instruments can you play? Well, I stuck primarily with the keyboard. I played the trombone a little bit in, in band, but I ended up in chorus, so I never got to be in the band, and then I was playing sports. So, but uh, I played a little bit of trombone and most primarily just keys, man. I mean, I I got a guitar hanging back here in the back of the wall, but you know, I picked the two, but never really, you know, took the time. Not like Will. Now, when I met Will, we were playing for his church down in Furman. Will was playing the guitar, and I just showed him like maybe one or two chords or whatever. And next thing you know, man, yeah, he was gone. And that's what I'm saying, though. All, all it takes, because, you know, I, growing up, growing up in Elston, you know, either you're a sports fanatic or, or or you learn to do music. And you have both work because you play sports. You play sports in high school as well, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I played football. I told my, uh, uh, what did I, crush the meniscus disc my senior year and missed a few games. But that's when I knew sports wasn't going to be it because... You know, after that injury, man, it was a little, yeah. yeah it was yeah. a matter of fact. Uh, my wife, my wife, uh, met one of your players, um, one of your uh, <laughs> players on your team. But he's running for sheriff. He's running for sheriff here in um, Richmond County of Augusta. Who, Tom Chelsea? Gino Brown. Oh, Gino. Oh, yeah, man. Listen, yeah, man. He's running for sheriff, man. He, he's he's actually we, here in Augusta in Richmond County. He's running for the sheriff. Of yeah, we was we were the offense and defensive line. I didn't know you lived in the, the Augusta area. Yeah, you yeah. know, he's been a police officer in, in this area for a while. Yeah, man, for years, man. Call him uh, uh, the Rock. Uh, uh, you call him Bob. Bob. Well, Bob was in high school out there, yeah. the linebacker from Oklahoma. But then after he got into uh, the sheriff's department, everybody calls him the Rock now because everybody yeah. knew the guy. Yeah, yeah, but he's still big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that part. He's still, he's still big. But that's what I'm talking about, man. You got so many people, talented people, that came out of just a small town, and, and, and just a, it just amazes me because you talk about Sam, yeah. because he's also a producer as well, isn't he? Oh, uh, Bob. Yeah, no, not that. Uh, when you talking about people that came out of the town, we got uh, Yolanda Howard who graduated with us. She's a judge in, in Macon. That's right. And she's then you got Willie Orr, who was the town CFO, That's who right. ran the superintendent's office, who was uh, uh, at uh, Edward Jones in investment uh, finance. You got uh, Kevin Gordon and, and John Boy and them, and they got the logging company. It's a lot of people. You got Chelsea, the sheriff. That's right. Of, of Vestal. He, all of us graduated together, man. That, 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 that's right, man. And, and it's a little thing that I that I found out that I didn't know that you know, you know doing my research. Even though I know you, I still have to do my research. 
So I, I got on, and they said that you actually went to Nielsen. I sure did. Yeah. yeah. I, I, the plan was, I didn't know uh, at the time. Um, I mean, outside of playing for choir, uh, Young Boys of Vestal and uh, playing for talent shows and uh, weddings and stuff, all me and Will did all that. I didn't know what music was going to be, so I figured, you know, let me get a degree in electronics and, you know, something closer related to uh, that I could use in music. And while I was there, I was uh, going to school, security guard out on Sullivan's Island, and then I got a job part-time to uh, washing cars at budget rental car. And so my off days, I would go to the music store in downtown Charleston, which was Fox Music. And I went in there one day and um, the guy said, yeah, I see you in there all the time. I had nobody to buy nothing. I just come in and play all the stuff I read about that I couldn't afford. That's right. And he said, he said, listen, man, so you don't bother the other customers. I'm going to take whatever you want to play with and put it in my office. And, you know, you just kind of tell me what you think about it. You know, so I'm thinking, you going to let me yeah. put whatever? Hey, thank you. Because it was similar to when, when I lived on the island. Um, the, the little Scotchman's or Walmart that's right by the first McDonald's on Hilton Head Island. Yeah. They used to have stereo component shops and I used to, when, when they used to be stereo systems where they had the cassette deck, the receiver and all these other stuff, I used to go in there with a, a cable and plug into the headphone jack yeah. and plug it into the back of the cassette deck and make a tape with the beats playing, you know, me playing the keys, you know, and then I would listen to it but also, you know, on any of my dates. I was put in the cassette like, yeah, man, that's you know. So when this guy let me build a studio in, in, in his office, it was awesome. So they had a contest in Charleston called the Budweiser Showdown. I so I made the song up, put it on the tape, and dropped it two stores down at the liquor store in the box. Next mm -hmm. thing while I'm washing cars, you know, I used to play the music from time to time in cars that had cassette decks while I was washing it. And I heard it playing and I'm like, wait a second, I'm washing a box truck. They don't have no cassette player. And then, you know, I thought, man, that's my music going to in Charleston. So the music goes off and the guy says, if anybody knows the whereabouts of Darren Lady, have him get in contact with us. He's our regional winner for Charleston, South Carolina. Man, I was jumping up and down like the old Toyota commercials. You know, I'm sure if anybody passed by, they'd probably say, that guy's on drugs, man. Because I was just... <laughs> And so who knew? But I was going to school for electronics, you know, and Nelson. I did not say that because I, I went to Nielsen. Okay, so you had a trailer too. Yeah, I stayed in the trailer. That's right, trailer park. Yeah, they 1600 Meany Street. That's, that's yes, sir, 1600 Mean Street, right down from the right. naval yard. I got, I, matter of fact, me and, my, me and a bunch of my partners, we got our degree from Nielsen. Okay. Just like you, you know, just wanted to get from, not, not saying that Elsa doesn't have anything, just wanted to get out and try something different because back then, Electronics was the key to, yeah, a, man. Big, to a big and better life. Yeah. I mean, I didn't finish. I went one year and then that happened. And I told my mother, you know, I said, Mom, um, I got to go to, I got to go north. I, I may have something with this music thing, but I can't see anything past me winning a regional contest or whatever. And if I don't move in an area where everything is going on, um, it may not happen, you know. So I left after the first year. I had a, a what, a 3.8 average, a 3.8. I was doing pretty good. I loved it, you know. I was getting, I still apply some things that I learned from Nelson when I learned about resistance and capacitors. And the, right. I can read a schematic here today from a car uh, uh, a manual because I went to Nelson. So, yeah. And, and that, that's what I say too, you know, you know, I, 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 well, I didn't have that tunnel vision. Like one of my partners, I, um, one of my partners, you know, we went, we graduated like a year, a year apart. You know, he stayed into the uh, community. I'm talking about Mark Rockin and ladies and gentlemen. He stayed in, got a business. Oh, he went to Nielsen too? Yeah, he went to Nielsen too. Oh, yeah. man, okay. Yeah, yeah, he went to Nielsen too. And, and he got his degree, he got his degree, but he stayed focused. I, like I tell people, I didn't have that tunnel vision. You know, mm. something hit my, my, my tunnel and I had to look. So I joined the military, and, and, you know, and, and it worked out for me as well. Well, I guess you can say the same thing with me. I didn't have tunnel vision either, because once a, once they called my name over the radio in Charles, and it was like, what electronics? What school, man? Listen, I'm I'm going for it. 
Yeah, yeah. As, as you can see, man, we got a lot of people tuning in. You know, a lot of people want to show your love. That's hey, my classmate Levita. I know you know Levita, Miss Odom. You know, she she. I was, showed you. Giving you love she was well. she was smart enough to be in some classes with me, like her and uh, and Buffy and I think Deborah Solomon. Yeah. Like they were advanced, man. All if I. <laughs> If I didn't know any better, I would feel crazy because I was in the 12th grade and I had 11th graders in some of my classes, man. But I just realized those young ladies, whew, they were sharp. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they, they're real sharp. But, you know, like, like, like I say, we it's all about you, my brother. I, I want to celebrate you, even though you got that sorry cowboy back there. Nah, man, don't later. do it. We'll talk about that later. Don't do it. I put it right down on my shoulder. You yeah, I know. Bow. You know that. I know because the man on the street will be holding it on y'all ass. Yo, you know what time it is, man. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, I want to talk about your music career. And, and, and one thing that I found out that I know, like you said, you won the talent show and people got in contact with you. But what made you really decide to buckle down and depend on me? I know the talent show did, but what made you focus in on the music business? Well, th that was it. When I won that contest, I was thinking to myself, you know, here it is, I moved to Charleston where I didn't know anybody. You know, the town that's four to, I don't know how many times larger than where we graduated from. And how ironic would it be out of all the people that are talented that were here that I could come here and I didn't have no lyrics on what I did. It was just music that I created in that store. Um, the fact that that guy was kind enough, I think his name was Dave Fox of Fox Music, he was kind enough to put this stuff in his office where, you know, I could go in there and make this tape. And it happened. So that's what made me think like, uh, yeah, man, I, I can't, I, I, I wouldn't have been able to, uh, I would have had some regrets. Or, or I would probably say if I'd won that contest and I never went to New Jersey, I would have spent most of my life sometimes thinking, man, what if I would have, you know, moved to New Jersey and tried to see how this music thing, you know? And I decided then, I didn't want to be shoulda, coulda, woulda, you know? I wanted to say, hey, man, if something happened and I had a, there was a possibility, and I'd been, you know, people would be like, Lord, send me a sign. How many signs do I need? Yeah. The fact that this guy, you know, did that for me, and then I win the contest, like, you know, and then there was a guy, Mr. Lawyer, I don't know, like, uh, in the lower country, Morris Lawyer, man. Mm -hmm. uh, I played, I think, for a sister's wedding or somebody's uh, in his family's wedding. And he told me, he said, man, if you ever need some help or, or if you ever decide to do this music thing, you know, let me know, man. I'll invest in you. And so when I decided to move to New Jersey, you know, all I had was my Toyota Saka and a couple of keyboards. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, I had a yellow Toyota Celica I bought from the next door. It was a car deal at Ernie's. And so, yeah, man, I, I me, my Toyota Celica and Mr. Lawyer, I told him what, what my plans was and what I was thinking about. And he said, all right. And I think he gave me a check for like uh, $1,200 or $1,400. And he made me sign a contract, but it was for significant. In the contract, he said, you don't owe me anything as long as you're pursuing the business of so career in music. He said, but if you start working or and you give up and you don't do anything, then you owe me plus interest. Now, listen, how many more signs do people need? You know, this guy, he, he saw something in me from playing at his, his sister, whoever's wedding that was. But yet, oh, he took a blind leap of faith and said, hey, man, if you're going to do that here, I'm going to help you out with what I can. Take this with you. And, 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 you, and you just saw, you just you just you just broke it down just perfect because your father saw it in you at first. That's yeah. the first sign that you got because he yeah, was out playing basketball. You out having fun. You out there, you know, down there in firm and doing what you do and want to do. But your father, no, come in here because he saw something in you at first. Joe and Jackson like, City. Yep. Yeah. And then you say you moved to Charleston and you know just going down downtown Charleston to the Fox 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 music and doing what you. That guy saw something in you. And then, like you just said, you know, wait, I won the contest. The music director, whoever saw something in you, that's that, what that's like three or four signs. And then you say, hey, I'm gonna do this to go to Jersey. And somebody to to come up with a contract and say, hey, you don't owe me anything, but I want to see you succeed. And and let me not uh, leave out the part when I went to the radio station. I spoke to a guy who was the DJ, mm -hmm. and he told me I didn't know um, they were gonna have the uh, the they were gonna play the music like on a, a Friday or Saturday night. And 
they played the music, right? And um, he said they noticed the calls were all coming from one house and one number. And he <laughs> told the he told the guy, he says, Nah, man. He said we I can't let him do that. He says, matter of fact. He said, we're going to scrap the show because he had somebody, a relative of somebody that worked at the radio station. So they told him when the polling was going to be. And so the guy said, nah, man, this has got to be fair. I want people to, to decide who should win from the area. I didn't know this guy from can of paint. And he said, so they scrapped it and they had it the next night when nobody knew when they were going to do it. And when they did it the next night, I, I was an overwhelming winner. And so I was like, Wow, man, you know, all of those things was like, this guy, you know, like, how, how is it that he would intercede on my, he don't know me from a can of paint, but he wanted it to be fair. And, you know, I went. When everybody calls and that's honest, that didn't know the show was going to go on that, listen to the radio station. Yeah, and that's great. And like I say, though, know, you know, like I say, I know you always been very, very talented. Your whole family is very talented. My brother, don't forget my brother down. Cliff. That's right. I, well, I'm about to take you down memory lane. Uh -oh. Tell me if you remember this. I know the video quality might not be great, but tell me if you remember this, this, this performance. together and clap your hands because we're gonna have a real good time but first we want to do this thing like Motown back in the day remember Nah, man. I, I tell you something. That was our first time. Well, mm -hmm. that wasn't me and Clue's first time actually on well national TV. We did a we did a, a local show with my father years ago. They used to do Parade of Stars in Augusta, Georgia, okay. and my father used to take choirs to the show on Sunday morning. And he one morning, me, Cliff, and Calvin, we performed a song that uh, we wrote and I played. But I don't know. Anyway, but that was my first national, and um, man, it it was interesting because all of a sudden they wanted me. Now they wanted me. We that's not the, how it originally goes. It just comes in, but they wanted me to start the song off. Yeah, now that's you know, what I'm saying. You say you had your beard, you had that young face. <laughs> first out of look, like first out of college, first out of high school, you got that young face. Yeah, man, but you know, the fact that I got to play with Paul Schaefer and the legendary David Letterman band and you know, like that, all of that was like, it was, and then I tell you the funny part of that, what I remember most from that is uh, we went to church the next day and my grandmother who's a gospel singer and my father, we went to Solid Rock in Patterson. And of course, the uh, rare recognizers from having been on the show and whatnot and, um, to my grandmother's house uh, after um, we used to go to her house and have dinner. We went to her house to have dinner and you know we sit around and talk about current events and what we did. And so when we got there, it was at my aunt's house and my auntie, she cooked. And my grandma walked in the door, my grandma said, listen, if y'all ever embarrass me like that on national TV again, I ain't never been so embarrassed in all my life. And I'm thinking, it was Cliff dancing and did he adjust himself like Michael Jackson or something? I'm trying to figure out what was she so embarrassed about. So she said, you mean to tell me all that money that record company got and that boy got and they couldn't put y'all in some suits y'all up in there, some, some coverall looking like some hobo, some dungarees on? And you know, I mean, I'm like, but grandma, we were on. That was 
that's not, this is, my that father said. That was style though. Yeah, my father said, let her have it, let her have it, you know. So she got over it. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but that was the style though. Yeah. I mean, that, that, was, that was the style back then, you know, and, and, and also working with LL Cool J, what was that like? It was unreal, man. I mean, to think that I had grown up listening to I Need Love and Can't Live Without My Radio. And then, you know, I look up one day, I'm in the studio, and this guy's in the vocal booth, Kango and all, you know, or sitting next to me while we, you know, working on music. And, you know, I, I have this thing, I, I, I call it my inner groupie. My inner groupie is always like, oh, man. But it, you don't see that, you know, because that's not what's on. Right now, the task at hand, what we gonna do? Because he's already successful. What can I bring to the table so that, you know, I can enjoy some of the success or be a part of something this guy has already done. And so, man, yeah, just being in the studio, even just uh, meeting Molly Ma, man. I, I was one year removed from college. I saw the video with him and Heavy D and Groovy Chill mm -hmm. and, I'm Uptown Ampton, I think that's the name of that song. Huh? Uptown Ampton, I think that's the name Uptown, of that song. Uptown, yeah, man. Yeah, and then I'm... UK now. I'm, I'm, I'm UK. Yeah, and I'm working at a music store, and he walks in, and, you know, I, was, I had this keyboard that I learned that I became, I guess, the, the, uh, the residence expert or the local re ex expert on the keyboard. He bought it from the 48th Street store in New York, and um, they came in, and he said, hey, man, he said, they told me to come over and see you, man. I bought this keyboard and they told me, you know, you know how to use it. So I had a little consultant hustle where if I sold you any equipment, I couldn't spend all the time showing you how to use it in the store because I had other customers that I had to help. Right. But if you lived in a 15 mile radius, you pay me 50 bucks an hour. I slide on now. Yeah. And, you know, and I used to always do it in a way where, listen, I would tell people, Write down a list, or you can even break out your VCR, or VHS camera, and whatever it is that you want to know, write it down. So when I get there, it wasn't like I'm gonna start with the table of contents, the power button. It's no, 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 no. Whatever you want to know. That way, when you paid me, you felt good about paying me because I helped you in an area where you didn't, know, you you needed it. Versus I'm, I milked the clock and made all nah. So I was doing that when I met Molly. And he set up a session and I went to his house up in upstate New York and I was waiting on him. He's like three hours late, man, you know? And I'm thinking, oh, after one hour, after two hours, but I'm like, man, no, I'm just thinking like, well, how long do I have to wait? Cause this guy is Molly Ma, but I'm patient because yeah. I was gonna leave there mad to go home to do what? Work on music. Man, if he came five hours late to have the ability to be able to be at this studio with the magnitude this guy, Hey man, I wait. It's worth it. So after about three hours, he came in, and while I uh, was waiting, I made this uh, scratch song to show him how to use the keyboard. And uh, he came in and he apologized, you know, for being late. They was shooting the video of self destruction that day. You know, he held him over. And when he came in and he heard the the little scratch song that I was playing, he's like, "Hey man, what's that?" I told him, uh, "Just something I was working on, you know, um, so I could show you how to use the keyboard." And he said, hey, man, Force and Deeds is looking for material. He said, yo, you want, we can submit it. I know you're not asking me. Sure enough, he put the beat to it of what I did. And it was the title cut to their, their last album, song called Step To Me. And so, yeah, things, but once again, who knew? But if I had left. That's right. But the, what they say, they say patience comes to those that wait. That's what they say. That's what they say. So that's what that's they say. That's your first writer's credit on, on Post and D, Post and C. Yeah, and D. yeah. That's that was actually the first song that I did that uh, on a national level or with a prominent national group uh, was Force and D's. Yeah, step to me. And, and you say you say Malamar. I know Malamar actually signed you, your brother Cliff, and Eric Williams. Y'all used to go by the group called the Flex, right? Right. That happened because of the LL record. Okay. Okay. No, trust, trust me. I know because, you know, when we heard y'all was 
you know, those boys, they about to be on, you know, everybody got the street, everybody around with, hey, they with LL. Those boys, hey, they, 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 you know, we all in, in Elster. We make sure we, we got home just to see what y'all guys are going to do. And, and like you say, though, man, it's it just the point about being patient with Marley Marr because Marley Marr back then, he was one of the hottest producers out there. And the final yeah, time, man. you, your brother, and um, Eric Williams, man, I knew that had to have been out of this world. Yeah, well, you know, once again, I never let my inner groupie get in the way of understanding that I had something that I needed to do. And, you know, like you can't be so phased by the, the magnitude of the people that you're around that you don't realize you're there for a reason. And whatever that reason is, make sure that you you are focused on that because you mess around, you won't be there because you didn't do what you was bought to the table to do or I had to. Yeah, because sometimes you be that groupie and you just knock everything out of whack. Because yeah. they like you just say, hey, if you come here to hear how you play, not for you to be, oh, I'm about to, I'm about to show my age now, not to be on my job about, oh, you Molly Mar, you, you understand, you understand what I'm trying to say. So yeah. you have to have that, you have to have that integrity to know that when you go in there and you with somebody that you've seen on the television, but at that time you there to show what you can do. Yeah, that part. Yeah, that, 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 that part, man. But like, like, like I say, let's keep this music train going because my man Bird, my man Bird, my man Bird told me this. He's like, damn, man, you know, man, um, um, Darren got shouted out in his record. I can't remember what he talking about. He said, man, you know the record, man. So my brother, another smash <laughs> hit. So, what was it like working with Donnell Jones, Left Eye? And then, like I said before, you, you done did music with all these great like Molly Mar. But to hear your name shout out, like, like, like my, when Bird told me, he's like, yeah, man, that's Darren Knight. I'm like, Darren Knight? He's like, I said, from, from Elston? From Furman? He's like, yeah. Oh, man, you lying. He's like, no, man, that's him. So, what, what, does, what does that feel like when you hear your name shouted out like that? On you, a big you need, record, that is. You need to turn your mic up a little bit, Charles. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, my brother, I'm trying here. Here you go. When you did that, it took me back to, they used to have this thing on, I think it was Sesame Street, and they used to be like, this is your life, and it would show the tree. <laughs> 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 I don't know why I got that, but anyway, got uh, no, when, when it came to that record with Left Eye, uh, uh -huh. interestingly enough, I was on that first album. Okay. You know, I, I, did know, I saw that. I did a song, two songs with Molly Ma when they first got signed. They flew us down to Atlanta and mm -hmm. we went to Babyface Studios, me, Molly, and there were uh, these two young ladies named Mary Brown and Marsha McClurkin. They were from a group called Abstract that Teddy okay. had out. And we went down and we did a song called This Is How It Should Be Done. And that's right. the way I like them. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, man. And so when it came around that they wanted her to get on a Danielle Jones record, like it was like, wow, you know good choice you know and, and, uh, and a great song. then that was eddie f's idea to do the name drop or to do the oh. name tag and he used to always say that like you know nobody won't know to look for us as the people who did this music because they won't read credits but if, if they right. say the name in the, the song you know that's all oh. and so of course when they got to my name i had quite a few people who called and was like yo you direct is that you slip out I was like, yeah, yeah, that, that's me. Yeah, because that part of it, I didn't, I didn't really care for the, uh, um, even though I've been on Soul Train and done all this stuff, there's that's right. a certain level of anonymity that I enjoy not being the person out front. Well, 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 well you know, well, we already saw you earlier. They had your face on the LL. And like I say, I, I, I apologize for some of these technical difficulties. I don't want to twist through, it through our interview. So I, I'm going to try to talk a little louder. Hopefully you can okay. hear me a little better now. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, but it's it just great. Like I say, when we heard your name on the radio, and even though there's a lot of great people that came out of where we are from, you know, just to know somebody that actually made it, made it. Because you, 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 that song is, is, is played worldwide. Like I say, I, I told a couple of friends of mine, I'm about to you know, do some self-promoting here. When we do our Two Cigars in a Blunt podcast, um, I was gonna have you on. I said, man, I know y'all know who he is. Y'all might not know his face, but y'all know his music. 
And when I played the song, and one of my brothers say, my brother Sean, he say, man, I got I got all those songs in my rotation. So you you are, I mean, you are one of the, I mean, not trying to date us, but the music that you was making, I was dancing to when I was much younger. And of course, we still gonna be dancing to this new music that you got coming out. You, you understand what I'm trying to say? So, so I know you don't want to be in the front, but man, hey, your music is just great. And I know you you were saying about the sex. Thank you. Yeah, because I'm about to run down a couple of songs. Your list was so long. Your list was so long. I had to do the songs that I like. Yeah, okay. I'm being a groupie right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm let my inner groupie come out. Okay. So, so I, I want to know what, what were you thinking when, when you when you did this song? Yes, that's another banger. <laughs> we go down well, here. After hit, after hit. Well, um, I think my music style comes from, um, I grew up, you know, in the area where we had good times. Yes. Um, freak out. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. That was this mm -hmm. guy named Niles of, uh, what was his name? Uh, oh, man. Niles Rogers. Uh -huh. And he was a guitar player, and I think the, the, the bass player name was Bernard. But there was something about the music that I grew up on, like uh, McFadden and Whitehead. Ain't oh, no yeah. stopping us now, yeah. you Come know. On, Come on. The, but that was that all that music had a, a positive flow to it, you know. Yeah. When you heard it, even if you didn't hear the music, you know, just like okay. And so when I started uh, doing, especially the up tempo music. The, the style of that I gravitated to was um, I wanted the song to have that kind of energy, you know, so when you heard it, you know, regardless of what the lyrics was doing, you know, just like, yeah, okay, you know, it's got that. And so it worked because the same guys who did You Know What's Up, uh, right. my brother Cliff and Bilal Muhammad, they heard the track, man, and they came right in there and went to work and it just lined up. I mean, from the melodies and see, I, I understand the music part of it is one thing, but I've been fortunate to work with a lot of good writers, you know, mostly my brother Cliff and Bilal throughout my history, but other writers like, like Veronica McKenzie and, and Charmel and um, Cherie and Juanita. So the music is one part but I've always been interested after I do the music and I, I try, sometimes I'm I'm bad about it. I can have a melody or something that I hear mm -hmm. or something that I'm trying to guide them towards, but the best ideas has come from when I didn't give them anything. I just allowed them to use, come to the table, whatever they were hearing based off of what I put in it and they add their colors and that's what you got. And, and I was gonna ask you that too. I'm glad you brought that up because you, you collaborate with a lot of people, Eddie L, you know, KG from I'm Naughty by Nature. Of course, your brother Cliff. How do you probably just broke it down a little bit, but how do y'all find that 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 dimension of, hey, I want to put this in or I want to then they want how y'all come to that balance of getting the, the perfect sound? Well, when when I produced for Molly, Molly was uh, primarily, a, you know, a beat guy, a sample guy. Yeah. And so when I started working with him, um, I started bringing the things from an individual level, you know, or from a creative part, like the Around the Way Girl stuff and yeah. some of the other stuff we did. But like well, for him, it would be, I could hear a sample of something that he wanted to use, but because if it was out of key or the pitch wasn't correct, then I could come in and play it over. So it fits, you know, tune wise, or I could change the, the keys, but keep the feel of whatever he was doing. And um, with him, that's primarily how we, uh, we produced. Then when I got with KG, man, KG was a whole nother, I mean, it's, it, it amazed me that this guy had so much music in his mind. So if you think when I started working with me, he had John A, we signed Next, we signed Jaheen, we signed Coffee Brown, and we signed this guy, Mag. Now we used to work on music all the time, but he had a, 
uh, he had a blueprint for what he wanted for each one of those groups. And we were doing so much music. It just amazed me how, you know, he, he knew what he wanted to do, you know, when he handed the track, we had tracks to write it to write to. He had an idea of what he was looking for. So I learned a lot from him in that aspect. But when it came to like uh, creating, um, I could play stuff, you know, bring what I bring, just kind of like with Molly. And, you know, okay, be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or like when we did Crush by Jeanne, we were just sitting in the studio. We, we as a matter of fact, we dri we driven up to Boston or somewhere to get this Fender Rhodes this guy was uh -huh. selling. And we came back with Defender Rose and put it in the studio because I told Kay, I said, man, it'd be nice to have so we can play some stuff that you could actually loop live. Yeah. And so we came back from Boston and I was sitting in the studio with him and Renee and I was just playing it. I played those chords on um, Crush and Renee was like, she said, yeah, what's that? Do that again, do it again. And Kay jumped on the, the NPC, made a beat. She started writing and that's how the song was made. Eddie F was a whole nother, once again, the guy with the beats, and he had the ear being a, a DJ and a, an A&R, you know, um, he could he, he could hear stuff right away and be like, yeah, yeah. Or like the original hook for You Know What's Up was, um, if you hear the car and blow, be out ready to go. Tonight we're gonna get away, Eddie said. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. uh, y'all heard it live y'all heard it live that, mm -mm. that that was supposed to be the original the original hook yeah it was with my brother Belewa, anthony <laughs> hamilton and i think delvis damon and eddie was like so we went out and got he it was the young lady i met she was a hal jackson talented team when her name was ron Ken, kinsey and i said well maybe i'll bring her in and see what you know so we bought her in the studio allowed her to set her down and put the song on minus the hook they did so she could hear the lyrics in the b section yeah. and she wrote the hook and as soon as we heard it was like that's it, that's it. oh man that's it man yeah. and, and, and you know i'm looking at your background because it's it can get me right into the next song because you work with one of the, I, I think she's one of the best vocalists out there. Because her voice, and she's one of the original rappers too, female rappers. Yeah, man, yeah, I know you're talking about. I don't know that she was a rapper, but yeah, what were what were you thinking when y'all did this song? I know you, brother. You probably like, damn. You probably said, damn, Charles, man. I ain't dead yet, but you just keep. <laughs> this is your life. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, man, I just want to give you all your props, man, because you got music that that a lot of people didn't listen to it, but they don't get to see the actual person behind the music, and that's why I want to bring to them today. Because, like I said before, I'm thankful that you granted me this opportunity to sit down and talk to you for one thing. And then I want to give you your praise now. Because like they say, you don't want to get your praise, you know, when you're dead, you dead let's, let's and gone. You. Yeah, let's give it to you now. Because what you have done, like I say, your music is in a lot of people's rotation. I know it's in my rotation. And, and some of these songs, like that one, I didn't know that you produced. I was like, oh my God, that's one of my favorites. So wow. what were you thinking when y'all did that song? Well, originally we did the song for Calvin Richardson. He had a right. deal on Universal. Um, and uh, Blair Muhammad and Cliff, once again, you know, they wrote the song. I remember the day they did it. We were, we used to write music and, and uh, we work and enjoy ourselves in the studio. Eddie had a, a nice uh, studio in his basement and he had an uh, awesome backyard pool and all the amenities. So some days we would go and work and swim and cook out and it's i remember this being one of those days where uh we were back and forth between in the studio and out by the poolside and um Bilal was in and cliff were in and they were writing this was when calvin had his deal on universal mm -hmm. and that's what came out of it uh interesting enough though um he walked away from his deal on universal because they were going to put the song out with no promotion and no video and uh, it ended up when Angie heard it, we talked to her and to, to, talked him into doing it with a duet with him and her, 
because when she heard it, she originally wanted to do it as a duet with her and D'Angelo. Oh, now, yeah. I'm, I'm a D'Angelo fan, right, but yeah. I respected the fact that this guy walked away from his deal because he believed in the record. So our thing was we couldn't just take the record and, you know, and that be a, the record that instrumental in getting him a deal. So it worked out that she did it with him. And yeah, that part. Yeah, and, and, and just like I said, another great record, man. And, and, and it just, like, like, like I say, it just amazes me the talent that you have worked with. And, and this is one, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know this, till, like I say, I did my research. My wife would tell you, man, I was up to like all week, man, I got to research. I got to make sure I have the, you know, the music that, but then, <laughs> forgive me for saying, I became a groupie because I was like, hey, I didn't know he did this. <laughs> No. So if I start like I'm a groupie right now, yeah, I'm being a groupie. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it, man, because I didn't know you worked with this late great artist. So what was that working with that great talent? Well, you know what was what was interesting. There's a couple of things I remember. This was right out off the hills of God rest his soul, um, and all the stuff that happened in the news and alleged uh, matrimonial marriage to R. Kelly, R. Kelly and all yeah. this. So yeah. when she came in, she came in with a mother or brother, and I want to say it was Joe Mo Hankerson, uh, management. They all came in together. So you know we met him and whatnot and um it, everything was cool you know because once again the inner groupie was like oh man this is Aaliyah but yeah. Darren Light is like it don't matter what are you going to do to add to what she's already have you know and so I had I, I, I laughed because when we talk about the chemistry I told Cliff and, and um I think it was yeah Cliff and Eric I told him say hey man we're going in with Aaliyah make sure y'all there because once we get comfortable and find out you know what the format or what she wants to do musically i need y'all to be on the spot you know so y'all can add lyrically so we went to the studio and uh we we did the song on the spot uh, my man kev lewis from patterson who was also a bass player and producer we needed the bass part we called him he came over he did the bass part you know it was, they loved it and so when it came down to uh, writing the song um just so happened that Renee from Johnny stops by, uh -huh. you know. So she comes in, you know, says, hey, you know, because they Johnny, they're talented, her and Jean, right. but it was just Renee. And so she started talking and she hears the music and everything. And she says, yo, what's your one? She says, oh, this is such and such. A. So Renee, you know, being she Johnny on the spot, you know, she kind of clicked. They caught a vibe and, you know, she started writing, you know, and I was thinking like, oh, Cliff and he just got boxed out, you know. So you, you in you in the studio and you like, I, because it's about chemistry. I could have, they probably could have came with something just as good or even better, but it's being able to to, to they didn't get a uh, they didn't get an opportunity to build any kind of chemistry or even write and work with her because once Renee came in and that woman thing hit and she was already talented and successful. Aaliyah kind of. Yeah. bent into her you know so it was like i had to tell cliff and eric like man they ain't, they ain't going down on this one man <laughs> man but yeah that but it was it was a pleasure working with her man she was real pleasant um uh and you know i didn't know then i don't know nobody knew then you know yeah. Yeah. ultimately yeah. where happened. yeah what could have right. been right because but even star was already up to the moment right so Wait, once, the moment. Right. The moment. so I was I was just fortunate that you know I got a chance to do you know two songs with her do producing with KG once again that's right. you know so yeah man but it was yeah that's what I remember most about that Renee sliding in and Cliff and Eric hey man it ain't gonna happen and, and you brought them up so might as well go into the next song because it's a banger as well. Man, you 
probably say the man and treat it. So see, I, I didn't even know you was going there, but see, I already had it had it lined up to go into John name. So what was that like working back with? Well, you know, before I, I started producing, okay, I had seen them on, I think it was one of the BET shows. And they were, uh, and they did a performance where Gene started off playing, uh, or one of them started off playing first and then mid partway through the song, they switched up. And the other one jumped on the piano and started playing and the other one was singing. And I was like, oh man, these, these girls are dope. You know, and I'm not talking picking, they could literally play. And so I was a fan, um, and I remember when I started working with them, with KG, you know, everybody's got their own little, how they like to record. Yeah. And so K was telling me, he said, man, you know, when they get ready to do vocals, man, they don't have, usually have nobody in the studio, you know, mm -hmm. they kick everybody else except for probably me and the engineer. So I was thinking, you know, um, we'd already started working on music and, and writing uh, songs and coming up to concepts, you know, and, um, I mean, I thought we had a pretty good relationship where we become, I become cool enough. And so when we got in the studio and it was time to record the vocals and they were going to the booth, I just assumed, okay, let me get up and leave with everybody else. That way, you know, they ain't got to sit tell me because Carrie kind of told me. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, uh, it was Renee and Jean and one of them said, asked me where I was going. I said, oh, I, I was leaving because I got to carry. They said, no, 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 you can stay. You know, well, I was like, okay, so I must be cool, you know. But uh, yeah, man, it was there was some talented girls, man. And uh, to know that they were connected to, uh, I think they went to Temple University, and okay. another guy they went to school with, guy, his name is James Poiz James Poiser. He did a lot of stuff with D'Angelo. I think he's in the band of uh, what's the late night guy's name? Uh, I can't think of what the oh, roots. Uh, oh, 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 man, uh, oh, Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, Jimmy Kimmel. What's the group? Yeah, group? you're right. So I met him. They were getting ready to do a D'Angelo session oh, when we were uh, mixing one of uh, um, John A's records, and then they'd all gone to school together. So I was like, wow, you know, the uh, the pool of talent that they came from, you know, with those guys and all that. But yeah, they were, they were talented, man. They could write, they could play. Um, as a matter of fact, Jean is still doing stuff today with her husband. And I think they were on the Grammy. I'm not sure if they got a Grammy or not, but man, excellent music, excellent, excellent. And, and, and like I say though, man, you you gave us something to jam to. I mean, you give us dance music, but you also give us some good goddamn slow dancing music. You know, back then, you know what y'all doing grinding on that dance floor because this is a banger. This is a banger, banger. So what I want to know is how, how can you go from, you know, let's get on the floor and dance <laughs> to, to that slow music? <laughs> how, how did you get in? How do you get in that tempo or get into that rhythm? How, how do you just switch it up like that? Um, It's kind of, you know, uh, it's a feel thing. Like sometimes in order to break the monotony of not doing the same thing so much, um, you got to try different grooves. Um, and that's something that I, I guess when I think about different grooves from the Angie Stone, More Than a Woman, to a song I did when Nicole Ray called, mm -hmm. I'm looking, um, they were different grooves from the up-tempo stuff or, or from Butter Love to I Still Love You to Too Close. And um, I think sometimes and not half stuff keeps sounding the same, yeah. sometimes changing the tempo up and changing the focus so you're able to use some different sounds and uh, try some different things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do. Someone sometimes when you have a style, like I'm pretty sure um, now there are a lot of people who read credits that can identify what a lot of um, the instruments I, use, I like to use and the patterns and the progressions that I like to use. It's kind of like a, a blueprint, like there was a, what, like Jam and Lewis, it, you take the song, Can You Stand the Rain? It's the same chords as I'm Only Human, as I think there's three or four of the songs where they pretty much use the same chords with some different drum beats and so that kind of thing. Well, like, like I said, I got one more song because 
I didn't know that you produced this song. And, and he's one of my favorite artists. I'm talking about Jahi. I, I didn't know you did this one. Because this song should be played. If you got a wedding, ladies and gentlemen, you, if you got a wedding, you need to play this goddamn song at the wedding. And, and, and then, because I didn't know, man, it, it just blew my mind when I researched you and this what came up. My daughter got married. I wanted my daughter to come down. <laughs> but that just that's that is a beautiful song. I, and you know, John, he was one of my favorite artists. I, and but that song is just it's just beautiful. I, I don't you could just say that shit acapella. Excuse me for cursing, but acapella, that's just a great song. Bridge accepted. <laughs> so, um so what is Jaheim, like working with Jaheim and, and doing a song well, like that? Well, when I was there for the inception, I remember um, we heard a, a tape of him. Um, he'd gone to like Six Flags or something and did a karaoke tape of him singing on a Luther Vandross song. And when I heard it, I told Kay, I said, man, sounds good. So um, I think can't, can't think of his Uncle Roman. His Uncle Roman bought him down to the uh, basement and uh, he sung for us. and. Um, I told Kay, man, I said, man, this guy has one of these voices. Man. Yes, he does. It's just like, yes, he and, does. And uh, Kay was like, he's like, yo, he said, cool, let's do it. You know, so we signed him. And uh, working with him, um, it, it, someone asked me the other night, um, out of all the artists and groups and people that I produced with, who would I say uh, was most memorable? And I'd have to say Jaheen, because. <laughs> Yeah, that <laughs> Those who know, Those who know, know. Yeah. listen, this guy, his talent, yes. undeniable. Yes. But when you go through, like, man, we, this guy was 17 when we met him, okay. you know? And so we watched him, you know, grow up from a teenager, man, into, and so when you uh, work with artists and recording, and, and uh, like he lived in Kay's house when he first started out. You get to know them, you know, on an intimate level because you you see, you know, them the way the rest of the world probably never will. And you watch them mature and grow up and go she through situations. Right. Yeah. But man, and he was the last guy that we signed out of all the groups that that uh, uh, we did. And here it is. Well, Coffee Brown is making a resurgence right. in Nexus. That's right. But uh, yeah, man, he... He's been consistent. Yeah, he's consistent. But yeah, man, his voice, yeah. his voice, he's yes. got one of them voices that, yeah. and I don't care how many times you hear it, man. And I did a song, I did an interlude with him called Love Is Not A Game. Okay. And um, I remember just, you know, hearing this guy sing, man, you know, of course I got a chance to, to do a record with Luther, you know, mm -hmm. but just hearing this guy's voice, man, and, and the fullness of it, and the tone, man. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I was about to run it down, too, because, you know, I got my list here. I'm just gonna go over a couple of them. You know, you work with Luther Vandross, next, of course, Guy, Aaliyah. You know, you also work with Queen Latifah. I, I saw something, I don't know if it's true, you did something with Gucci Mane as well? Is that? You do, see what I'm saying? So, so you, you all over the place. Uh, um, Nas, you was on, um, Nas, uh, of course, Heavy D and the Boys. LL, that was LG. LG. I yeah, got yeah. to the Nas project. Uh, Easy Mo B's little brother named LG. Um, he was doing a lot of music and doing remixes. And uh, this was in between uh, Molly Marl and KG. And I was doing stuff with uh, Easy uh, LG, Easy Mo B's little brother, and this guy mm -hmm. named Sid Reynolds, man. I did a lot of remixes with Sid Reynolds, man. It's this guy, man. And see, I, now I, I, I have to say this. Um, I'm appreciative of uh, people like Sid, because at the time I was transitioning from Molly Mall to KG. Yeah. I started working with him and we just clicked. 
but he was so interested in working with me and doing stuff, you know. He'd be like, hey man, you know, if you need money to get out of here, man. Like, yo, just get out of here, I got you. You know, and I remember driving out of Long Island with my daughter, who's who's 31 now, in the baby seat, and his son, Jawan, who was in music now, couldn't even walk. And we sit them down and we'd work on remixes for like Jamiroquai and a whole bunch of people, you know, so. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. But, but like I say though, I, I'm done with my music. I'm done being a groupie. So what I want you to do right now, brother, because I know you got a lot of new things going. Let people know what you got going on right now. Well, what I decided, um, the whole idea for me coming out with D Collective, um, a lot of the records that uh, people have heard from me, they don't know that behind the scenes, um, uh, the powers that be, like a and the different people in the record industry, were like they didn't think they were good songs, or should I say they didn't think they were viable in the public space. And uh, like, you know what's up, we played that for maybe every a &R person that me or Eddie had a relationship with, and they all said it was too neo soul sounding. And so since Eddie was working with Donnell, uh, Donnell heard it and he did it and LA loved it. But the record was nine weeks at number one, eight weeks at number one and consecutively. So, and all those people who said they wanted Missy Elliott's Get Your Freak On and Cisco's Thong to Thong Thong. And don't get me wrong, those are great records, great songs, but, but yeah. I've always been uh, under the mindset, uh, there's 60 minutes in an hour, of which right. three minutes takes the average song to play their space for that kind of music and what they think or what they want to do creatively and their space for what somebody else wants to. So I've always been in the frame of mind that to do what I thought along with the creative people that I thought was good and let the public decide, That's you know? Right. Um, and so I've decided between the writers that I've been working with from uh, Juanita to my brother Cliff and Bilal, Veronica, Tiffany, Charmel, um, DD artists that we're going to do some of the records that you know and we're doing it from a frame of mind we're not trying to find nobody to sell it to because that was often the thing for me like these people are, are such great singers that once they demo a record and then somebody else goes to sing it it's cool because yeah. the world yeah. never heard what I heard but That's in right. my mind I'm like yeah. it's alright <laughs> you know oh like a true story when it came to, I did a record on um, uh, Biggie Smalls and Cliff. Uh, it was called Missing You. I produced it with KG. And okay. it was called Missing You. And Cliff had done all the backgrounds and Big heard his voice and Big was like, yo, this record's dope, we, we, we gotta do it. But Puff being a diplomatic person, he yeah. was, he said, yeah, we're gonna put 112 on it. And, oh, I see, oh, oh, and, oh and, Cliff and Big, the background. Well, one Cliff one? was, but oh. no, Cliff was, but, but okay. Puff wanted to put 112 on it, and oh, his Big group. was like, nah, I like the dude that's on there, oh, and so goodness. he was able to work out a compromise, he said, listen, man, let's try it, and if mm -hmm. it don't sound good with 112 singing it, we'll keep your man on it, uh -huh. and guess who had the vocal coach the session? Cliff did, oh, but he wow. went in, being the professional that he is, he went in and, yo, we, we got a chance to meet them, and that's when we found out Q Parker was a guy, he really did all the notes in the group, learned the notes oh, and sung it live, man, but yeah. Nice. Oh, man, that's good, man. Yeah. Hey, shout, shout out to your brother Cliff, man. You know, I man. know Cliff. Cliff is the high top fade. Yeah, I know Cliff. That's but, right. You know, like, like I say, I know I know basically your whole family, and you know, right. I don't want to dismiss that. Yeah, right. you you and Cliff are like a tag team. If, if y'all were right. years apart, y'all y'all be twins. <laughs> we are we are Irish twins. We're only eleven months and twelve days apart. Okay, okay. Well, y'all like you just said because y'all 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 are tag team and y'all keep doing great music. But yeah, so we got we're gonna do what what um, we think is good. And I mean, it's at the point now where uh, with digital distribution, you know, anybody yeah. that really feels as though they have something, hey man. You got everything to gain and nothing to lose. But, you know, I always tell people, um, be intentional. Don't just do anything and throw it up against the wall. No, no, no. Like any other business, if I wanted to sell hot dogs, I can't just buy a bun 
uh, some hot dogs and get a grill and open up a cart and did no I got to do the research do the business understand all the formalities that go along with that business if I wanted to be successful well that's all we have to do now with this digital distribution era and be able to put out the things that you know we think are good so you know um, I'm asking uh, for those who supported me before and now that they know when they see the logo and they start to hear the new music that I just get an honest listen. And if they really love it, you know, stream it, buy it, support it. So those who are involved creatively can continue to keep doing it, man, because it's something we love. And I, and I was about to, I was about to let you um, about to say that though. So if they, if, you know, if you're looking for new talent or if they're trying to reach you, how can they reach you? Well, it's I'm always uh, uh, open um, to uh, working with new people and new talent. Um, right now, I mean, if somebody has a, a demo or something they want me to hear, hear or something they want to pitch or propose, they can send it to decollectedmusic at gmail.com and I'll listen to it because, you know, as we're doing things right now, if we heard something like a John Heem or somebody who we all thought was, you know, had a potential, then hey, we would be open to, you know, taking on a project and seeing what we could create. Um, but the one thing I will say, I don't, prima donnas and already stars, <laughs> I'm too old. If, uh, listen. If, you, if there's no humility and you think that you already are that next great thing, and, those, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with being confident. Yes, yes. But if, yes. listen, I've seen the nightmares. Yes. I've seen the headaches. I want to do music with good people who come from a good frame of mind, who, who exercise a level of humility and are grateful, not for the things that hasn't happened in their life and what they don't have, but can really thank God for the fact of what they do have and what has happened so much so there's room for growth but you know if you come in with these this entitlement and you just know you the next you know it's yeah. i'm not your guy you know and I, you could be the next lady gaga yeah. i'm okay because i i'd rather have peace of mind and good energy without all the stress and you know yeah and all that you come with mm -mm. So decollectedmusic at gmail.com if you got something you want me to hear and I'll check it out. And like like I've always said to people, um, listen, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't uh, predict what a million plus people will like to gravitate to. However, I do have a point of reference and opinion based off of some things that I've done that's been successful. And so when if I hear something that a person, you know, does and I say, oh, I'm cool, don't give up. You just got to find that person or that frame of person who aligns with what you're trying to do and where you're trying to go. Because there's a lot of stuff on the radio over these years that I've heard that I was like, who sat in the boardroom and listened to that? I was like, yeah, that's it. You know, but evidently somebody did because it's on the radio. And at that time, with millions of marketing dollars behind it. So I just say, you know, uh, Find people who will who will you align with on a on a on a, a spiritual level, um, a level of humility. Do the business, do your homework. Be able to understand that um, in the art and the world of negotiation that still exists in this business, five percent of something is better than a hundred percent of nothing. That's right. Um, but depending on what that is. Yeah, yeah. Before we go, my brother, man, you know, I got two, I, I got three things. I'm going to say my last one. I don't want you to just kick me off because you know what I'm going to talk about. But it's two things. You got a new artist that's coming out for one and shout him out so that we could be looking for that music once it drops. And then if you, you know, if you could do something live, you know, whatever, let people know how, how, how you work those keys back there. So. Well, they heard me live on all them clips I put up. <laughs> Is this thing on? <laughs> but do you, do you have a new artist that you currently working with now that the people should be looking for that new music from him or her? Yep. The first artist is Winnie to Win. Okay. Um, she's she's uh, written for Angie Stone. She's been on the road with Angie Stone. 
She's written for Beyonce. She's uh, uh, been on the road with Fred Hammond. Um, oh man, just an awesome, awesome talent, man. Um, and after her would be Cherie Hicks. Uh, Cherie, uh, man, I've known her now for, for a while. <laughs> and she's always, from the time of her being signed to Def Jam to uh, Rob Cavellas at CNC Music Factory. Okay. And um, yeah, man, excellent writer um, and excellent vocalist, but they're gonna be the first two coming. Then the next two will be uh, Tiffany Favorite, who won Sunday's, who's a run up on Sunday's best. Okay. And then um, my brother Cliff, you know, he's got a record that he's working on. I think he's doing it with Blair Muhammad and uh, perhaps Eric from Blackstreet. You could play something, man. You, I know you say we don't listen to your live. They can't. They can't hear nothing. Oh, they can't hear nothing. Okay. They, they say they can't hear you. It's all good, then. Well, they can hear. They can hear it because they can go back and watch this interview. And, and, and like I said before, brother, my last question. And, and you know, I know you probably kicked me. Off. How about them cowboys? The man on the street is not gonna let you go because you got those sorry ass pillows back there with those goddamn sorry cowboys back there. Think hey, die eagles die. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you know, at the end of the day, bro, uh -huh. it's just sports, man. I mean, it's I've been disappointed sports. by them so many years for so long. That's At right. this point, I just like the colors, man. Well, I mean, I, I like the colors. You still got your VCR. You still watch your championship. Nah, man. I'm a, I'm a rock out, man. You know what? And they going to win it when nobody expects them to win it. That's when when everybody going to be like, oh, they're in the playoffs. Okay, yeah. Okay. What's going to happen next? And then it's going to be like, oh. And they're going to make it all the way to the Super Bowl. And they're going to say, yeah, they. Listen, I'm a Clemson Tiger, too. I suffered okay. through the Bowden years. When Dabble okay. came along and all of a sudden it was like the light went off. I think that's what it's going to I mean, Jerry Jones, God bless his soul, I never wish death go. on anybody. But until he gets out of the organization and get out of the way, man. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah that man. part. Yeah. Hey, 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 like I say, Cliff, man. Not, I called you Cliff, so you twin brother. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I can hear you now. Okay, Derek. But but like I say, though, man, I, I, I greatly appreciate it. You, you know, I reached out. Like I said, <laughs> like I told my wife, I was like 2 o'clock at night. I was drinking, man. And I saw it. I said, man, no, Derek. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've been doing this podcasting thing for about a year. I said, I'm going to mm -hmm. reach out, man. All he can say is no. But all, all you did was I sent you the message. It came back the next day. And you, all you say was, for sure. And, and, yeah, I, man. And, and you know, I, I'm greatly appreciated that you took the time out of your day to to come talk with the man on the street. Because, like I say, I know you, I know you, but it's just the fact that I got into my groupie mode, and I wanted to cherish. I wanted to see people see the talent that you put out, the music that you put out. And like I say, the list is so long. The people that you work with, I couldn't get all the music into this hour that we've been talking. But I just want people to know that, hey, if you got a dream, like you said, don't let nobody uh, 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 doubt your flame. Because it only takes one person to say no, but you had a lot of people in your life that keep telling you to keep going. And that's what you did. Oh, I had some no's. I mean, I, listen, I done, I, I done been in, 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 in bombed and tanked and power cores going out and you know, but you just got to be persistent, man. You know, and I, I appreciate you reaching out to me. Like, listen, man, um, I'm just another child of God, man. And I realized that I'm no more, uh, uh, or should I say, favorable in God's eye than anybody else. So um, like yourself, especially being from the hometown, man, I wish you success. You know, I hope that this thing turned into... Don't change it to Club Shay Shay or name like that. Just keep your name. But you know, if it should happen, that it, it and then you just keep a level of humility and know that everybody has a beginning, man. Everybody's out. With everything that I've done, I haven't done anything, man. Yeah. You know, but except for move forward and try to do the best that I can, man. And to have some sort of legacy. But the real uh, legacy about me will be. Um, 
how like, people experience me, not the music you heard, but those who knew me now, uh, you know, how I affected their lives, you know, was I this, this asshole or, or was I somebody that, you know, they could talk to or, or, you know, we could have a conversation or we could disagree or agree, you know, this right here. It's a lot of people that do this music, but, you know, who are you? But one more thing, one more time, brother. Shout out all your, all, 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 all your Instagram or whatever, however everybody can get in contact with you, because we want everybody to be able to get in contact with you. That's, you know, whatever you got going on. So shout them all out. Okay, what well, the main IG page is D Collective, um, what's it? D Collective Music at Gmail. That's the, um, that's the. Uh, Oh, uh, let me make sure I got this right. Yeah, it's D Collective Music on IG. It's also D Collective Music at gmail.com. And then, you know, my personal page, Darren Lighty, is connected to that and on Facebook. And I will be launching a Facebook page and a TikTok when we put out the new music. So, yeah, just uh, hit me up. Um, I apologize if I don't get back to some people in a timely manner. Uh, it's not that I'm ignoring you. Um, I've always said to people, I'd rather uh, answer a message or talk to somebody when I can be courteous and devote at least uh, some time to hear what they want to talk about rather than I just pick up the phone and I'm busy. And then I tell them two seconds into the conversation, hey, can I call you back? And, so. and like I said before, I said it earlier, but I said it again. Thank you, my brother, man. A hey, great conversation. A lot of feedback from everybody out there. Hey, like I always say, you know, come for the show, but stay for the conversation. I'm the man. All right. The street, and that's Mr. Darren Light. Oh, Mr. Super Producer, Composer, Writer, Background Vocalist, All Around Musician. All the mustard, ketchup, and relish. <laughs> 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 and, and we are out, man. Thank you again, my brother, man. Peace. All right. I, I got you stuck. Got, got you stuck. Off. Go, 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 go.